Ghost BSD has a consistent look and feel, and it has for a while now. The desktop itself doesn't really change, the wallpaper is very nice and pleasant, and it's something that they've stuck with for quite a few releases. Some icons have changed, of course, but I think that we can make Ghost BSD a little bit more unique, a bit more reflective of our personality. So, having installed some extra software, like Inkscape and LibreOffice, I think we should look at how we can customise the wallpaper and the icons. I mean, obviously we could just do something simple like move them across. I mean, that's uh, customising to a certain extent. Just move them back. But I think we can do a little bit more. So, first we're going to have a look at the wallpapers. As you can see, there is a selection, and they're very pleasant. And the themes, well, the themes really is only down to uh, Vimix or Vimix. But you can do simple things like change the, the theme here if you want dark or light or normal. You can customise it, of course, if you press the Customise tab. And what that lets you do is, lets you change everything from the borders, to the controls, you know, the widgets, and even the colours if you wish. So if we customise it and we wanted to say, uh, I don't know, change it from... Here, let's go for Windows, shall we? And then if you want to change the default icons. That's Mate ones, if you wish. Add Waiter. And Mentor. And... Change the pointer if you want. So you can change the you have a black pointer or a white one or even go for say a KDE style one. And of course then you can change the fonts, font sizes, font uh, styles, etc. I mean these are all very very basic things. But you know, in combination you can make a difference to how you perceive your desktop, which is always a good thing to do if you find yourself staring at the same screen all the time. So we're just looking through these. I kind of like that one. That's nice. Just move the window up there. I'm just going to show you how you can download a new wallpaper if you wish and put it into the the waiting directory, as it were. So if you look for wallpapers, say for instance, I'm looking for Unix ones. And what's available? Um, oh, one with a FreeBSD logo. I like that. It mentions Unix, so uh, we'll have that one. Click on it, follow the various links. If it says you can download, then uh, download it. Click on download. And go for the various steps it asks you to. Of course, it will download it to the download folder. Click on home, and there's the download folder. What I like to do is I like to create a, a folder within my home directory specifically for wallpapers. Then I can build up a little collection there so they're not all stuck in the, the download folder, as it were. So if we just move that over to the wallpaper folder, you don't have to do this, it's just something that I like to do. And we'll use the wallpaper in this particular directory so it's, we always know where it's going to be. You can add it manually by clicking on the Add button and then finding your way to the folder that we downloaded it to. Or, more conveniently, if you just drag it across, it will immediately change to that new wallpaper and add it as well. So that's, uh, that's really kind of cool. Adding a new theme is a little bit more contrived and a little more difficult than adding uh, a new wallpaper, of course. What I found personally is a lot of themes are designed for GTK3 or uh, you know, GNOME or whatever. And with Mate, in particular Mate on GhostBSD, it's themes that are based upon GTK2 are more likely to work. And even then, it can be hit and miss. So if you want to add a theme, you could fire up a browser like you did for the wallpapers, or you just click on the Get More Themes Online. And that will start up a browser session and take you straight to the Themes page. On it, you will see there is GTK2 themes, and GTK3 themes. So clicking on the GTK2 themes tab, or link, and you can just scroll down and see what tickles your fancy. Now a lot of these are for XFCE, so they may not work with uh, 
matter. So we'll just scroll down for a generic GTK2 theme. And like I say, you know, it's it's down to what what you like. Uh, something simple, maybe. Um, like this card. Card GTK2. Yeah, it looks fairly decent. I like it. It's nice and simple. So you click on it and go to where it says files and then you can download click on the download icon and it opens up the usual dialog box download it and once that's done we'll just minimize that and again we'll go to the download folder now you could make a new separate um, directory if you wish but in this case if we enable the show all um, option so it's control h it will show you the hidden files and we need to find the dot themes folder just drag that across go to the change desktop background option although we're not changing the background we're changing the theme so we just go over to the themes tab install and it should detect it there there it is Click on that. The theme card GTK2 has been installed. Would you like to apply it now or keep your current theme? So I'm going to apply it now. And there we go. It's not a dramatic change, but it's, it is a change. Although because we mucked around with the, uh, the toolbar at the top, it's not changed that. So, well, it's no big deal. But there you are. Look, there's the uh, widgets for card GTK2. So, yes, uh, it doesn't seem to have put anything into that. So I don't know what our options are with this. Oh well, I'll just, um, I'll choose another one. There we go. That looks all right, looks very decent. And of course, if you choose other themes that are more dramatic, then you'll get more of a dramatic change. Now, GhostBSD, the officially supported one anyway, comes with Matty, as you know, there is a community version called XFCE. There is even a, a development one where you can choose uh, KDE. I mean, that's okay. But if you want to use the supported version and you want to add your own desktop or window manager, if you head over to the software station, as we've seen in the previous video, just type in a password, brings up the usual dialog box, and we'll just grab the latest database, that's fine. Okay, there we go. And you can search manually using the list on the left, of course, if you go down to uh, X11 window managers. And it will display everything which uh, you expect in a window manager. You know, quite a few there. If you're a power user and you want one of these uh, minimalistic ones, then, then that's not fine. Or if you want, a, say, a, a semi-minimal one, you can have XFCE. I'm not going to put one of these window managers in because uh, I just want to show you perhaps the more popular uh, options that people go for. And that'll be GNOME, KDE and XFCE. But there's quite a few window managers if you want these. If you do search for KDE, it will bring up quite a lot of uh, lists there. You click on the, the meta package. I presume it's a meta package. And uh, we'll download that. But I'm not sure what it'll pull in, but let's have a look. Hmm... Pulls in a lot of extras. We'll install it and we'll see what's left. If necessary, we'll install some extra stuff as a, as an addition. Well, it's all installed, except for the rest haven't been, so we'll just quickly go down the list and we'll just add them to install now. I'll just speed this up so we're not, um, we're not waiting. There's probably a few extra things I've not downloaded, but we'll see. There's probably a few extra things that I'm not selected, but we'll see how it works out. Yeah, that looks a lot better. So I'll just download these. It might be a good idea to try and do all this in one go rather than two separate um, installs, which uh, we're doing here. Now that's all done. Well, at least on the KDE side. Now we're going to try Norm 3. Yes, I know Norm 4 is already out, and there are some packages which um, are actually looking at that. They're 4. Point, no, 4. 1, okay. 41.0. So I don't know whether I'm actually installing GNOME 3 or GNOME 4. So uh, I'll click on it, it says GNOME 3. But I presume that there are some GNOME 4 elements. Hmm. Okay, well, I'll install GNOME 3. And I will select. Just fast forward this, of course. There we go. Right. Okay, okay. 
We're going to log out and we're going to test the new install of KDE and Norm 3. So you see that little icon there? It's got the Mate symbol. And it's telling us that that's the default one, of course it would be. But if you click on it, it brings up a menu. And I do apologise for it uh, being rather translucent in nature. It's a little bit hard to read, but if you highlight it, it's in white and black, so it's, it stands out. Now, I think that we can ignore the first two. You've got Norm, uh, you've got Norm Classic, Norman XORG, you've got Plasma on Wayland, which we don't want, and Plasma X11, which we do. So, selecting that. I think it's selected. Go, cool. hopefully that's going to do it. Yeah, that's right, it's changed it. So you know it's going to boot into the environment when the little picture comes up. And we'll try KDE. Now you've got to remember that KDE and GNOME 3 are not native to GhostBSD. They're not fully supported. And you may encounter issues. And one of the issues I noticed straight away is that there's no icons on the, the desktop. Now, those in the know will probably know how to rectify that. Or you could just simply open up your file uh, browser and drag them uh, over to the, the desktop or sim links if you wish. But, you know, installing KDE is not difficult. And you've got all the usual options, everything seems to work fine. It's just the icons on the screen are missing. And you can configure and you get various uh, wallpaper options as you can see there, and boot screen splashes, etc. It's very nice. And I like a bit of KDE. It's, uh, it's gotten to a place now where uh, it's extremely useful and usable. There's uh, some applications, games, etc. Everything works nice and smoothly, which is good. And let's have a look at the info center. And there you are. GhostBSD is based upon FreeBSD 13.0 stable. So it's a rolling release uh, for all intents and purposes. Let's close that. Very nice indeed. We're just going to log out and try GNOME 3, I think. There we go. Right, we're back to the login again. And again, as we did before, if we select GNOME on Xorg, put in a password. Have you not? I should always get into that bit of putting the password in and then changing it, actually, I think. Yeah, that's better. I always tend to use just start X and alter the uh, X in the RC file. There we go. There's GNOME 3. Or is it GNOME 4? I don't know. It looks like GNOME 4 maybe. I don't know. But anyway, it's if you like this particular style, I'm not over keen on the, uh, the touchscreen aspect of it. But it looks nice and clean. It, it actually looks very good, actually. Usability is a different option, but if this is what you like... And if it's fairly snappy, then uh, you should be you should be happy with this. Yeah, it seems to be all right. Change a look at the backgrounds. Yeah, some nice selection there. Some of them are pretty abstract, so I like this light bulb one. So it looks good, and that's how you install Norm Three on GhostBSD. Yeah, it's quite a heavy on uh, RAM. But then again, um, 41.0. So we are using a, almost like a hybrid version of uh, 3 and 41.0. Hmm. Scroll through the various applications available. It does take a long time to find what you want. And there's a software station. So we're just going to quickly install something while we're here. And we're going to install XFCE. So in a, in a roundabout way, we're going to uh, create a zone version of the, uh, the community build. Again, for the third and final time on this. There's XFCE, so we're just going to put this password in. Hopefully it comes up. Oh, yes, there it is. It's very nice, very nice and clean. And, of course, those familiar with XFCE, it's, uh, it's XFCE. Yeah, and this was only a very quick 
uh, cursory look at how you can make Ghost BSD your own. There's more options available, of course, and for a much longer video, then you could go into a deep dive in changing uh, and installing new fonts, etc. The icons you can install, the new fonts you can install from the uh, repositories. And so, with a bit of time and a bit of effort, a bit of patience, you can really create a custom look for GhostBSD and still have the functionality of GhostBSD in the background. And I think that's something to be applauded. Unlike some operating systems, it's not locked down and it's not hard to change. It just takes a bit of imagination and a little bit longer time than I've given in this video. GhostBSD is a brilliant operating system. It's a fantastic showcase of what FreeBSD itself can do and that with people with more talent and imagination than I've got can create a ready out of the box and ready to use FreeBSD desktop system. And GhostBSD was one of the first to do that. And it's still going strong. And that is very much to the credit of the lead developer, Eric. Anyway, thanks for watching and I'll catch you next time. This and every other video on my channel has been made using FreeBSD and open source software.